to our guest today. I'm really excited that uh, Mike Namiko is here. He's a state representative out of uh, Farmington, representing the 21st uh, Assembly District. Um, and I just wanted to also let you know, this is part of an initiative that, that I've been trying to put together at Texas. It's called the Democracy Initiative, the Democracy Commitment Initiative Project. And so what we're trying to do is get Texas students as civically engaged as we can, okay? And that can mean a, a lot of things, but one of the things that I think will be meaningful to us is to have uh, state leaders come and talk to us about the experiences that he or she has had in the state legislature, as well as the things that are happening in our communities. I assume at some level, we all, all want to be active in our communities and play a role in making them better for each of us. And so this is one small but very important part of what we're trying to do. I'd also like to thank Ali Pettit. She's helping me out with this program. Uh, she's written many letters to state leaders in the last few months asking them to come here. We've got some really good feedback. And so we hope that Mike will be the first of, of many state leaders who come here to speak to all of you, to inspire you and in, in how to get involved. Okay, so why don't we get started? Mike, you've got the floor. I'd like to thank you again for being here. And uh, thank you for that. it's all here. Let me ask you one quick question. Oh, sure. Um, how long does, how long? As do long as you want to do that. You want to discuss it, right? Yeah. So feel free to go for a half hour or so okay. with, yeah. with the right. students here. And there are some factors. Uh, a half an hour is not, not half too long. Half an hour is not too long. It's not too brief. It's perfect. Okay. So right. whatever time is left, I want my Vietnam War students to stay so that we can continue with their class. Ah, okay. But otherwise, you know, okay. you can have as much time as you want. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. No problem. Well, first of all, <laughs> uh, my name is Mike D'Amico, as Professor Piero uh, mentioned. Uh, I live in Farmington. Um, I, I am a former teacher, and I will tell you, I always, I always felt constrained. If I move away from here, am I going to mess You're up? fine. Even better, I'll take it away okay. from you. All right, good. <laughs> All right. I need that stuff, so, okay. Um, um, I feel naked without it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just me. All right. Fair, fair enough. Um, um, well, um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, as, as I mentioned to Professor Piero, um, I guess I, I'm the first uh, as part of this uh, project that he is working on. You will have many uh, distinguished people come and talk to you in the future. I believe that's the plan and that's the hope, but at least I can claim that I was the first, so for whatever that's worth. Um, is this the first day of class for all of you, of this class? It is, okay. Well, ho hopefully we'll make it an interesting and, and, and uh, uh, enlightening one. We're going to try anyhow. Um, I, I um, as I mentioned, I am a uh, former teacher. Um, I am a uh, a, a former uh, stay-at-home dad for my two daughters. So I had a little bit of a different experience than, than a lot of the people in the legislature, um, which which brings to mind uh, something that I wanted to mention. And I guess I'll mention it up front. I, I don't know what kind of impression you have of what the legislature, how, the, the, the makeup of the legislature, but, but uh, between the senators and the representatives, uh, there are very widely varied uh, professions and, and walks of life and life experiences, which I think is a good thing. I think that that's the way that it should be. Um, um, I, I uh, you know, I, I, I shudder when I think of you know. Uh, the possibility that we could someday end up with a professional legislature or professional politicians, you know, uh, deciding on, on important issues for the state. I mean, that, it's just not right. So, so just I've only been there for a year as a legislator. I was there for several years as a staff person, uh, and of course, I made more money as a staff person than I as a legislator. But that's another. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, um, th 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 there are, you know. We have one doctor in the legislature. We have uh, many, many attorneys. Some people would say too many, but we have quite a few. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, teachers. We have um, uh, truck drivers. We have um, uh, stay-at-home moms, stay-at-home dads. We have uh, insurance agents. Um, you name it. Uh, you know, butcher, baker, candlestick maker. Uh, you know. Which I think is really, it's, it, it, the, 
people who are there represent all walks of life throughout the state, all areas of the state, and, and, and it's a good cross-representation of the people that live in the state, and you know, I, I think that that is beneficial to all of us because we can pass laws that are meaningful to, 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 to everybody, not just to the lawyers, or not just to the doctors, or you know, what other groups are, are, are represented there. But anyhow, Professor Fierro asked me to talk a little bit, of, and I don't like talking about myself, so I, I'll keep it brief, but just to give you a little background, if that's okay. Um, I, it probably doesn't surprise you to know that I became interested in politics at a very young age. Um, my, my, my dad in particular, as well as my mom, were, were very involved in, in, in civic activities in, in my hometown. I grew up in eastern Connecticut, not too far away, and I've always been here in Connecticut. But you know, my parents were both interested in, in what was going on in their town. They were interested in, in, in the way the government was run in, 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 our, in our town, in their town. And, and, and uh, you know, the old expression is all, polit all politics is local. And you know, that's, that's where you come from. You come from your hometown. You know, no matter where you end up in the world, you, you are shaped and, and formed and, and you get your values and, and your ideas from, from, from the place where you grew up. So really, truly, all politics is local. And I think we're fortunate to have the kind of setup that we have in the legislature where people are elected from their hometowns. So, so, so even, though, even though you make decisions that affect the whole state, you, you, you still have to answer to the people who elected you, who come from your district, who, who can see you every day in the grocery store and at the gas station and at the dry cleaners. And you, know, you run into people and have conversations with them. And they can tell you that you're all wet sometimes. You know, uh, or they can tell you that you did a good job, or here's a good idea that, 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 that you should try out. So you know, it, it's fortunate that we're able to keep it on a local level in a small state if we had it here. I became interested um, because I've always been interested in people. And that's, you know, politics is all about people. You know, uh, some people are interested in numbers. Some people are interested in technology. Some people are interested in medicine. And you know, they go on to those professions and those careers. I've always been interested in people. And that, you know, politics is all, is all about people and, and how people negotiate. And, and, and try to make a better life for themselves uh, through, through, you know, through, through, with the assistance of the government and through, through, through the political system. Um, um, I'm not sure where I want to go with that. Um, you know, the, um, I, I became a teacher, which, uh, uh, you know, is, is kind of a, a, a um, an extension of my interest in, 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 in what you know in, in people and, and people's problems and, and, and people's attitudes and ideas and so forth. Um, when I grew up, uh, and, and, and this I, I, this is interesting that we have a, a cross section of different ages here. Um, I grew up in the time uh, when uh, there was a lot of mistrust in government, and yet I still managed to maintain my idealism, I suppose, about government. I grew up in the time of the Vietnam War. Uh, and I was a kid, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, I grew up in the time of Watergate, when, when, when the president uh, was forced from office, um, and, and there was a lot of mistrust of government. But, but I, I still managed to maintain, and I hope you maintain, your, your confidence that, that, that government can do good things for people, and that, that, that you know, and, and hopefully you don't uh, adopt a cynical attitude about government. Um, and the more involved that you get in government, I think you will begin to realize, as I realize, that there are really good people involved in government. You know, it's easy to say, oh, they're all a bunch of crooks. You know, those guys are all in it for themselves. You know, blah, blah, blah. It's easy to say that, but when you actually work with these people on a day-to-day -day basis, you begin to realize that most of us basically want the same things. You know, we want, we want good schools for our kids. We want good roads to drive on. We want to be able to make a decent living. We want to be able to, you know, in, in, enjoy life, we want to be able to have a comfortable retirement when all is said and done. We all want the same things, although sometimes we disagree on how we're going to achieve those things. So, I mean, if you take nothing else away from, from, from what I tell you today, I hope you will take away the idea that people in government, with a few exceptions, the bad apples, with a few exceptions, but people in government are, are there because, not because they want to get rich, not because they want to, you know, conquer the world, but they're there because they want to use their skills and their talents and their relationships to try to make things better for people. That's always been my experience, both at the town level 
and at the state capitol at the state level. People are really there trying to make a difference and a positive difference. Um, I got involved in student government when I was in high school, uh, which probably doesn't surprise you. Um, and I, I hope that, 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 that some of you, if not all of you, uh, you know, get involved in, in, in student government. I mean, that's how you have a say in the way your environment is shaped. That's how you have a say in the way things are run in your school. So, you know, I would encourage you to get involved as much as you can in, 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 in student government. Um, when I went to college, um, I, I majored in an interdis interdisciplinary program, uh, which involved a study of history, and government and economics. And, and those three things really prepared me well for you know, future <coughs> life, but particularly and especially for, for life in government. Uh, so all of those things uh, contributed to that. Um, as I mentioned, I was a stay-at-home dad for several years for my two daughters. I was a teacher of history for, for several years. Um, um, and wh while I, uh, uh, you know, uh, while I was a stay-at-home dad, once I had left my teaching career, I, I always tried to spend as much time in the schools as I could. I volunteered in my kids' schools and, 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 and tried to you know, make a positive difference there. Um, more specifically, more closely to, 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 to today, um, I, I will tell you, uh, you know, everybody has a story about how they got involved in you know, their political life. Uh, and my specific story really relates to my wife. And, one day I was sitting there watching the news, as you know, most of us do in the evening, and you know, I, I did my usual thing where I you know, was upset about something that happened. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember if it was a local issue or a national issue, and you know, I started yelling at the TV set, as some of us do, and she, my wife turned to me and she said, you know, instead of yelling at the TV set or yelling at me, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you get off your stuff and do something about it? And the next day, I called my state representative, it wasn't me at the time, I called my state representative and said, I want to get involved. What can I do to help? How can I, how can I get involved in this? So as it happened, he was involved in, in a re-election campaign at the time. I helped him with his re-election campaign. He was successful. And, and um, I you know, got the bug. I got interested. I said, hey, this is, this is pretty cool. You know, elective office is, is, is pretty interesting. So um, um, I helped him on a subsequent campaign a couple years later. Um, uh, I, I applied for a job uh, working in, in the legislature because I, I found, you know, you know, once people get elected, they, they need staff people to help them up there. So I got a job working up there. I did that for several years. I found it enjoyable. Um, I ran for the town council in Farmington. I was on the town council for about seven years right here in, in, in Farmington. Found it to be very interesting work. And, and again, going back to all politics is local, you know, town council, we don't deal with war and peace. We don't deal with you know all the big issues that you hear about. You know you deal with garbage cans and sewers and sidewalks and people's taxes and all the stuff that really affects people and really you know hits them. You know as the saying goes, where the rubber meets the road. And I found that interesting. And uh, when, when when the opportunity came, the seat opened up in the legislature. I ran for the legislative seat. Uh, I was defeated the first time. I decided that defeat doesn't mean failure. Defeat just means you have to try again next time. I tried again the next time, and I was successful and was elected to the legislature. So, and I've been there for a grand total of one year. So I'm not going to give you as many great stories or as much insight as somebody who's been there for 20 years, but I'll give you my one year's worth of insight. Um, um, am I talking too much? I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm yeah. interested in what you have to say, so I have yeah. Okay. All right, well, um, I don't know how much you guys know about state government. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know, we have three branches of government, uh, the judicial, legislative, and executive. I'm involved in the legislature. The legislature. Uh, we have a House of Representatives, which has 151 members. We have a state senate, which has 36 members. Um, um, it's, it, it's all based on uh, population, um, and in order to be fair, Every state representative, there are 151 of us, every state representative represents about 23 or 24,000 people. So um, as it turns out, I represent about 90% of the town of Farmington. Farmington has a population of about 25,000, maybe closer to 26,000 now. So I can't represent, to be fair, I, you know, it's not fair to represent everybody in town. I represent 
about 24,000 of those people. Um, and, and, and they divide it up specifically that way so that each representative represents about 24,000 or something like that um, in, order, in order to be fair. It wouldn't be fair. And in the old days, back you know, before they, 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 um, they uh, changed the Constitution, in the old days, uh, the city of Hartford, as huge as it was, had one representative. And the smallest town in Connecticut, anybody know what the smallest town in Connecticut is? It's in eastern Connecticut. Union, with a population of probably about 1,000 people, maybe even less, had one representative. It wasn't fair. Why should a town of 1,000 people have a representative and a town like Hartford, which has, what, 200,000 people? have one representative. So, so now they've divided up all the districts so that each representative represents the same amount as everybody else. So for example, Hartford has seven representatives in the legislature right now. Farmington has me, and then another little part of Farmington uh, is represented by somebody who also represents part of West Hartford. So they divide it up so that everybody has approximately equal numbers. In the state senate, there are 36 state senators, uh, and they do it the same way. They divide the state up. 36 pieces, and they all represent about the same amount of people. Um, well, I don't know. There are many things that we talk about. Do, do you folks know who your state senator? Well, I understand. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. You guys are from all over. I, I, I forget. You guys are, most, are some of you from Farmington, I presume. I'm going to. Oh boy, aren't you kind? Of, <laughs> aren't you kind? Of, thank you. Um, now, now, do you folks know who your state rep is from from, from the various towns? Yes? No? Anybody know who their state rep is? You must know. Oh, Betty Bocas. So you must be from Plainville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Betty's been there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know what? It, it's, it's good to know who your rep is, only, if only because someday you might need something. You might have a question. You might have an issue. You might have a problem with state government. You pick up the phone and you call Betty. Hey, Betty, this is... Your constituent, so and so, you know, I need some help, and and that's what they're there for. I mean, you know, that that's why they are your represent. They they represent you. They represent your interests. I mean, they they, they, they can't they can't give you a million dollars, but they can try to solve whatever problems you might have with state government, and, and or they can listen to your suggestions from state government. So you know, if if you don't know who your rep is, you ought to find out. And if you're at all at all interested in the political process, you ought to call them and talk to them, and and. Representatives love to talk to their constituents because when you talk to a constituent, it's a potential vote. And anybody that's involved in politics always wants to get as many votes as they can. And, you know, it's it's not a, not a surprise. So, um, you know, uh, I would encourage you to get involved in the process and, and, and find out who your reps are, find out who your senators are, and and and, and uh, engage them in conversation. And and it, you know, you might learn something, and they might learn something as a result. So you know, I, I would encourage that for anybody. Um, somebody like myself in state government, um, you, you really have um, a, a dual responsibility. Um, uh, you're there to represent your district, which in my case is, is Farmington, and in Betty's case is Plainville, and in all the other reps, <coughs> the, the towns and cities that they represent. So you, you're there to represent their interests, but you're also there to do the, the work of the state of Connecticut. So you're there to, to make good decisions for the whole state. And sometimes that, you know, most of the time that works out okay. Sometimes it presents a conflict. Gee, you know, do, do, I, do I support, you know, this bill or this issue? It, it's going to be beneficial to my town. I'm not so sure it's such a great idea for the state or, or vice versa. It's a great idea for the state. I'm not sure, so sure my town's going to benefit that much from it. So there's always a dynamic or there's always a tension you know, you're supposed to represent your hometown, but you're also supposed to be looking out for the interests of the state as well. And I remember, you guys are all familiar with JFK, John F. Kennedy, our late president. Um, I remember a story that one of his fellow Massachusetts senators uh, told years ago about how um, they, they were trying to get a particular, this is in, in, in the United States Senate, they were trying to get a particular piece of legislation through that was gonna benefit Massachusetts. and. Um, then JFK, John F. Kennedy, got elected president. Wow, this is great. Kennedy, he's our new president. That legislation we were trying to get from Massachusetts, man, we're all set. You know, that's going to go through no problem. We got the president on our, on our side now. And come to find out that 
JFK, to the disappointment of the people in Massachusetts, or these particular people in Massachusetts, he wasn't so supportive of whatever that piece of legislation was. So this senator went up to him and said, Mr. President, you know, you're, when you were in the Senate, you were behind us. You, you were with us on this. You, you thought this was the greatest idea in the world. You were gung-ho. We're going to get this through. We're going to make sure this happens. Now that you're president, you're not supporting us. What happened? And, and the answer was, look, I used to represent Massachusetts. Now I'm the president. I represent the whole country. I have to look at it from a little different perspective. What used to be such a great idea for my, my home state, I'm not so sure it's a great idea for the whole country. So it's you know and any any time you're in a situation like that you have to you have to consider those two competing things what's good for my little area what's good for everybody because you have to make decisions for everybody so um, JFK had that problem and anybody that's in elective office ha has that to, to, to consider um, I will tell you it, uh, and I tell this to everybody and it's the greatest job in the world if you like politics if you like people if you like government it's the greatest job in the world. Because it's not like in Washington where you know there's all kinds of pressure and all kinds of money being thrown at you and all kinds. Of, it's the state legislature. It's a small enough and it's a local enough, localized enough uh, uh, institution that you know that, 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 that you, as I said, you can you run into your constituents at the gas station and at the grocery store and you can you know get their opinions on things all the time. So I, I you know my this is just my prejudice, but. People in Washington are kind of isolated from, from that kind of contact, but you really do have contact with everybody as, as a state state uh, uh, legislator. Uh, I think it's a, a, a wonderful job. I, 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 I have spoken briefly with uh, Professor Fierro, and we're going to speak later about internship possibilities. You know, if anybody, they do have an internship program up there, and, and, and I would encourage anybody from, from, from here or from, from Tunxis. Uh, to, 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 if you're interested at all in, in, in serving an internship uh, up there at the Capitol to learn the legislative process, it's a great experience. So, so something that we should, we should talk about and think about. Um, I don't know. Should I go through the whole boring legislative process? It's not boring to me. I don't know if it's No, I, it's not boring to me, but I, I think I'd like to have everyone ask some questions. I mean, if you yeah. want to take questions, it's oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. To do. Of course. Uh, I don't know if there are questions for, for Mike, but uh, I certainly have a couple that are going through my head. I don't want to start it though. So. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can you tell us what committees you serve on? Yeah, I do. I'm, and so I got carried away. I was going to tell you a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, every legislator serves on uh, usually three or four committees. Um, and and you, you can request which committees you want to be on. If you're a freshman like me, you basically, you know, you're at the, you're at the bottom of the totem pole, so you get what you get. But I was lucky enough that, that I ended up with most of the, the ones that I requested. So um, I am on the Education Committee, which as a former teacher, I certainly appreciate that, and I'm interested in the work there. I'm on the Environment Committee, uh, and I'm on the Public Health Committee. Uh, and I'm also on the Executive and Legislative Nominations Committee. Uh, which is an interesting job because when the governor nominates somebody to be a, 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 um, an agency head or, 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 or a commissioner of a particular department, they, they, they are vetted and they are voted on by the executive and legislative nominations committee. So I get to, you know, listen to all the people who are, you know, nominated for all these uh, you know, state positions. So that's an interesting job. But all, all those committees, to me, they're all very interesting. In education environment and, and, and public health, they all have very interesting issues that come before them. That, you know. So if you have any suggestions for legislation in any of those areas, I'll be ha happy to, 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 to entertain them and introduce them. Thank you. So, what's the process for committee assignments? How did you end up getting those, to serve on those committees? Um, okay, well, when I was elected, um, you know, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, the, the, um, I'm a Democrat, um, so, so the Democratic uh, uh, leadership uh, just you know, sends out a form to everybody, you know, pretty you know, straightforward, you know, what, what committees are you interested in being on, you know, just realize you probably won't get all of your, all of your choices, but, uh, and, and so I, I, I put down several requests of committees I thought I was interested in, and I, I, one of them was education. And, and, and the other was public health that I was most interested in, and, and I, I actually got you know, those two, which I consider myself fortunate. But basically, you just ask. And I, you know, 
the, the people who have been there a long time get their first preference, naturally. And that's why I said, as a rookie, you know, I didn't expect much, but I was lucky enough to get the two. And then, uh, you know, I also said I was interested in environment. It wasn't high on my list, but since I've been on there, I, I find that, you know, certainly just as interesting as, as, as the other committees. So, but yeah, it, it's really just a matter of asking. And, 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 and I will tell you, since you're talking about committees, it, it, it's, it, it, as you probably, as you can imagine, it, it, I guess it's like this in any organization, the, 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 the chairs of the committees have, have quite a bit of power. I mean, the chairs of the committees are the ones who, I don't say, they don't decide by themselves, but they have a, quite a bit of influence over what legislation is going to go forward and what legislation is not going to go forward. So, so um, it, it's great to be on a committee, but it's even better to be the chair of the committee or the vice chair of the committee. That's, that's where all the power is. That's where you get to influence with what happens. But you have to be there for a while in order to, to get to that point. So. Yes, sir? It's like the process of becoming like a legislator. Seems like you did, you know, a couple years in the government. You, know, you can't just be like, you know, one day I'm going to get some votes. And become, you know, yeah. like, no, I, you're right. You know, I didn't do a very good job explaining that, and I, I, I will. I'll, I'll take a minute and explain it a little better. I mean, um, um, like, it, you know, I started out working on, on the campaign of, of, of the gentleman, one of the gentlemen who preceded me at, at the state, the state, rep. and and. And, and, and then I was lucky enough to, to land a job up there as, as a staff person. Um, um, and right about at the same time, uh, a couple people, several people suggested to me, you know, they're always looking for good people to, to run for town government. Why don't, why don't you get involved and, and, and run for something in town government? You know, and as, as you know, they're, 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 they're always, literally, people, they're dying for people to help to, 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 to get involved in town government. It doesn't even have to be elective office. It can be an appointed office. So, for example, in this town, you know, we have the, the town council, the board of education, the zoning board. Um, there are many um, um, uh, volunteer boards that, 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 you, that you can get involved in as well. So, uh, wasn't my idea at first, but I was encouraged. You know what? They need good people on the town council, which is you know, pretty pretty important, you know, position. I mean, those are the people who really run, you know. Set, set, Set the direction and the course of the town, uh, and and I was reluctant to do it at first because I hadn't served in any any other you know capacity in town. But but I was encouraged by the fact that I, I had been involved in my kids' schools, uh, and, and and had I knew a lot of parents. And I mean, you 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 the young people don't appreciate this. Some of the some of the more seasoned people will appreciate this. But but when when you have kids in the school system, that's where you really get to meet people and know people. Uh, you know, you meet other parents, and you meet um, um, lots of people. Uh, you know, just through that connection. So I knew a lot of people in town, and honestly, another thing that you should take away from this: people have to trust you. People have to like you. People have to trust you. And I, f I felt like I, I could I could make this run. I, I could run for for this position of town council because I know a lot of people. I think they like me. I think they trust me. Um, I hope they do, and I'm going to give it a try. And, and you know, it involves a lot of phone calls and a lot of knocking on doors. And hey, I'm, I'm running for this job. I want to do a good job for the town. Uh, I hope you put your trust in me. I hope you vote for me. I mean, that, that when you when you're starting out, that's about all you can do. You know, it's not like a necessity. You know, to be there for like ten years before you can even, even move up. No, just as long as people like you. Yeah, I mean, look. Ultimately, you get elected. You get elected to office. I mean, it's it's Abraham Lincoln had had had, had a, a a great little, little saying: uh, the, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. I mean, it's 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 you know people go in and they cast their ballot, and if, if they like you, they're going to vote for you. If they trust you, they're going to vote for you. And 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 you know that's. But, but I guess all of, I guess what I'm trying to say is you know some people come in and, and they think they're going to you know. Oh, everybody should vote for me. Well, you have to give them a reason to vote for you. So you have to, you know, you have to kind of lay the groundwork. But I, I felt like my the things that I had done in the community up to that point had kind of laid the groundwork. And you know, got elected, fortunately. You know, and, and, and then you know was reelected a couple times. And so, so when it, when I finally ran for, for the state legislature, it wasn't like I was you know a, a, a newcomer that nobody had ever. You know, I, I had been involved in town government for about six or seven years. So you know. You know, the, the more the more the people know you, you know that that gives you a, a, 
an advantage, certainly. Um, you know, so you have to kind of start out small and then, and then work your way up. So, uh, are you interested at all in? Uh, I don't know. What? Well, it's something to think about. You know, you know any, anyone who is interested in becoming politically active, a good way to do that is the internship program that, that Mike mentioned. Maybe this is a good time to just briefly speak about the legislative internship program. We have it here at Tungsis. Anyone who wants to apply, you've got to have a minimum of 20 credits. Uh, some of you who just got here may, may not be fine for you, but others who want to get politically involved, you work with a state legislator and you find out what the issues are, you get to know the culture of, of uh, the General Assembly and how it works, and, and it's a really good opportunity. Ali comes from that uh, program. She could speak to that probably ah, better than I can. I, I, you should be doing this instead of me, because you're right. <laughs> I did it in 2010. 2010? Yep. That's a nice compliment. That's yeah. No, the, and again, I don't want to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. You know, did it change your perception of, 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 of politicians? Can I say? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more work involved than yeah. I thought. Yeah. You know, everyone wants their bill to go through, and you don't realize how long it takes in the whole process. And mm. I enjoy the public hearings the best. I love going to them and Which, well, again, that, that's a good segue. I don't, again, I don't think it's too much of your time to run it. Right, so, well, I don't know if people are familiar with, with the process. I mean, uh, um, legislation really starts from the ground up. Um, um, if you have a good idea for, for you know, all of us have, 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 have sat there and said, gee, there ought to be a law that says such and such. Right? Geez, there ought to be, they ought to make a law that says that, okay? If you have one of those ideas, Call your legislator, call your state senator or your state representative, and say, I have an idea for a bill. Here's my idea. Here's why I think it's a good idea. You wanna you you, you ought to introduce this and 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 and, you know, and, and see see where, where it goes. So and that's where most of the good ideas for legislation you know comes from, is is just ordinary people calling up their legislator. So what and it's, it's a very simple process. I mean, the legislator introduces the bill. You, know, you, you write up the concept. Uh, I, when I, whenever I'm talking to elementary kids, I always say, well, here's my idea. I think we ought to go to school six days a week. That's my, that's my bill. We're going to introduce a bill saying we go to school six, you know, Monday through Saturday. And of course, they all groan. And say, <laughs> but how would I do that? I would, I would, I would write the, you know, just write that concept. I would give it to one of the lawyers. Uh, you know, and they have plenty of lawyers who work up there, as you can imagine. And, and one of the lawyers would write it into legal language that made sure that it didn't conflict with any other statutes or laws that are already on the books. And that bill, you know, requiring school Monday through Saturday, that bill would go, would get assigned to the education committee. And the education committee would put it on their agenda. They would have a public hearing. And, and, and this goes for all bills. They would have a public hearing which would be advertised, and anybody who wanted to come and speak on that bill could come to the public hearing, you sign up, you get three minutes to speak on any particular bill, you could say your three minutes worth of information, you know, whatever you wanted to say about it, and then everybody else in the state who's interested in doing it could give their three minutes of testimony. Um, um, that's the public hearing process where everybody, you know, everybody's allowed to come and speak. And, and then they have a committee meeting afterwards, and they would vote on whether to, to, to move that bill along. And if it, if, if it has the approval of the chairs, and that's always important, and it also has the approval of most of the members of the committee, if the committee votes to approve it, then they, 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 they report it out of committee, and they might have to send it to another committee, they might have to send it to the general law committee, they might have to send it to um, the appropriations committee, uh, so most bills go through two or three or four different committees that, that, you know, that, that have cognizance over those areas. But if it goes through all those different committees and is approved by those different committees, it will eventually go to the full House of Representatives. And if it's approved in the full House of Representatives, it will go to the Senate. And if it's approved in the Senate, then the governor has to decide to either sign it and make it law or to veto it and, you know, that kills it. But it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, 
I don't want to say it's a simple process, but I mean, it, it's, it's basically everybody has their say. And of course, there are plenty of people up there, uh, lobbyists, uh, who, you know, they get some, sometimes have a bad reputation, but lobbyists work for, they work for their clients, and they, they do a lot of research, and they are there to, you know, uh, to testify uh, on, 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 on different bills and give people information on different bills. Um, um, they're a good source of information, but you know they also you have to understand that a, a lobbyist is also is working for somebody, so they have a you know an agenda that they, they're, they're they're getting paid by somebody to to advance a certain agenda. So you always have to keep that in mind. But but um, really, it's a combination of ordinary people and lobbyists and people throughout the state who have their say on all this legislation. And if you can convince the committee, and if you can convince the, the, the whole legislature that you know that, that, you're, that this idea is a good one. It will eventually work its way through the process and become law. Um, but my whole point is, as as our friend Ali can, can uh, attest to, it, it, it really it come, everything comes from the ground up. Um, um, the governor introduces his own bills, you know, that he thinks are good, that he and his staff have put together. They they think are good ideas. But you know that, that's that's their agenda. But you know, any any ordinary person can introduce a bill. You just have to get your legislator to put it in there for you. And that's why you need to pick up the phone and call them and you know have have a conversation with them. So it's 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 it's, it's really local government. Um, but you have to make the effort to do it. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to offer a little encouragement. To younger folks in the room who might be interested in running for an office. I, I want to point out in the last election that New Britain elected a, a mayor in her 20s, yeah. Kristen Stewart. Now she did have a certain advantage. Her father is a former mayor. Right. But still, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Very young person put together a yeah. grassroots campaign, bipartisan, and uh, is now mayor of a, you know, one of the more significant cities in the state. Yeah, no, I, I know her. She, 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 you don't have to be 50 to run for office. No. 26. Yeah, 26. Erin so, is 26 years old. Yeah. She, she used to work up at the Capitol I, you know, when yes. I was up there. Yeah. Um, 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 not that many years ago, the, 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 the mayor of um, mayor of Torrington. Yes. I think he was 22 or 23 years old when he was elected mayor of Torrington. Um, um, we all remember the name John Rowland, who was our governor several years ago. Okay, John Rowland was a state rep at age 23. He went to college. He graduated from college at age 22. The next year, he ran for the state legislature and won. A couple years later, he ran for Congress and won. A couple years after that, he ran for governor. So you, you don't have to be an old guy to do this job. And really, we're better off having young people do it. You know, so something to consider. Um, Any other questions? Yes. Um, I don't want to run the office, but what I want to do is it with the state. Like, is it kind of the same thing? Like, if you want to be an attorney when I'm the state, would you have to work with like, the legislation branch to like, work in it? I'm like, not quite understanding the question. Like, Can you speak a little louder, please? Okay. Thank you. Like, if you wanted to be an attorney for the state, would you? Would work for the legis state. I can't the legislature. Yeah, you would work for that thing for Yes, but I mean, you is have it, to. Is there a little difference again between working with the state and the prosecutor? Well, first of all, you have to you have to complete your legal education. But 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 uh, to, to get a job working up there as an attorney, I mean, jobs open up from time to time, and they advertise them, and and um, you know you, you could you could uh, you know. Uh, Apply for them just like for any other any other position. So it's not like getting into it than it would be getting office. I don't believe so. I, you know, but I, you know, they're looking for specific. You know, they're they're looking for for, for for well, like anything else, people you know with experience and and and, and you know, there's there's all different kinds of law. So 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 I, I think you would you'd have to demonstrate that, that you had some kind of experience. Some kind of knowledge, you know, about the, the, the legislative process. Uh, you know, um, um, not you wouldn't have to have it, but it, it would it wouldn't hurt. Um, um, 
But yeah, I mean, they, you know, they, they, there are plenty of, plenty of legal jobs up there, but uh, um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yeah, or, no, no. I just didn't know if it was different to work for the state than to work for the private It's It's a little bit different. Um, um, no, not being a lawyer, I, I, I wouldn't be able to, to, to answer that completely for you. I'm sorry to say. But, but there, there's plenty of, as I said, there are plenty of lawyers in the legislature, and there are plenty of lawyers who work for the legislature. And believe me, I, I always refer to the, 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 the people that work up there, besides the legislators who get elected, the, 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 there are attorneys and there, there are, are researchers, um, um, there are librarians. I, I, I refer to them all as the smart people. Not that the legislators aren't smart, but the, 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 you know these. We have really probably some of the smartest people in the state of Connecticut working up there, and, and it's it's a good thing that we do because you know we're passing laws that affect the whole state. So it's good that we have all kinds of you know intelligent, experienced people who are able to you know help us when we craft those laws. So you know I whenever I have a question about any kind of legislation, I always pick up the phone and talk to one of the smart people. So, you know, that's really, it's just a, the wise thing to do. Just, just a quick question. Can you talk, <clears throat> for the benefit of the students, can you talk about whether it's a full-time job, part-time job in the legislature, and yeah. what the time commitment is? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned to you um, earlier, um, I, I was actually making more money as a staff person than as a legislator. Um, um, and it, it, is, it is, there's a reason for that. It's supposed to be a part-time job. Um, the legislature meets um, for five months out of the year in the odd number of years and three months in the even number of years. So, so this year, 2014, even number of years, so we're gonna meet for three months. We start next week uh, and it, we, we end, uh, by law, we end uh, first week in May. So it goes from the first week in February to first week in May. It's only three months. You know, last year was five months. So it's, it's a, it's a part-time job. Um, I think it's good that it is a part-time job because um, you get people from all walks of life. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult, but pe people who you know people make they make it work. There, there are a couple of people up there that, 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 that there's one guy who, who drives for FedEx. I don't know how he does it, but he is able to drive for FedEx and be up there at the legislature, you know, writing legislation and voting on legislation, and he does it. I mean, a, a lot of people there are a lot of people up there who are self-employed, so they kind of make their own hours. So you know that's a little easier to, to be able to do that. Um, there, you know, there are people who get time off from their jobs. Um, um, you know, there, there are people who are teachers who are, who are able to, or, or professors who are able to juggle it, you know, make sure that you know, all their classes are at a certain time so that they can spend the time that they need to spend up there. Um, so it, it involves a little bit of juggling around, but, but people are able to do it. Um, but it is a part-time job. Uh, you're not gonna get rich. Um, um, I will tell you, the, the, the salary is $28,000 a year. Um, which is okay, but um, um, you know, when I when, per day, uh, you know, for the amount of time that you, and that's the other thing, it, it, it's considered a part-time job, but 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 um, you know, people are up there all the time. You know, the, the conscientious legislators are there, you know, because there's always something to learn. That, that, you know, aside from when we're actually in session, there are all kinds of informational sessions and. And, and informational hearings where you learn about the different you know bills that have been proposed. So you know you literally could spend your whole day up there, your your, your whole life up there, and, and and still be learning things. And you know it's it, it's a great learning environment. So, so in those three or five months, depending on the year, how much time are you putting in per day? Can you quantify you know, several hours a day um, during that time, or um, more than that? Well, for me, it's my only job. Because I'm lucky enough, my wife, you know, has a, has a decent job, and you know, um, we wouldn't be able to support her and my two kids on twenty-eight thousand dollars a year, you know. So, but for me, I, I treat it as my full-time job. So, from now until May, you know, we'll go into session next week until May. I'll be there probably four out of five days, and 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 uh, probably you know, a good good part of the day, a good part of the day, um, because I'm you know I'm on four committees. So they meet fairly regularly, and and, and aside from the three meetings, there, there are always you know subcommittee meetings and you know informational things that you go to to, to, to learn and, and to discuss legislation. So you, know, it's, you, you could you know be there. Quite, so you get to talk 
to your constituents a lot during that time, or do you have more engagement with them outside of that um, um, session? But both, really. Um, you know, uh, I, I have I have more free time actually when, when we're not in session. But but when we're in session, you know, uh, and that's when everybody's all excited, you know, about what's going on. So so for example, um, as everybody recalls, last year, which is my first year as a legislator. Uh, the big issue up there was was, the, was uh, uh, gun legislation, and you know, uh, uh, you know, as a result of what happened, you know, at, at, at Sandy Hook in, in, in Newtown. So I heard from a lot of my constituents. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably got 100 emails a day, and I got several phone calls a day, you know, from people, not just on that issue, but you know, a lot of them on, on that issue. So, so I guess the point is, when when we're in session, that that's when people, that's when everything is on people's minds. You know, they read the newspaper, they watch TV, they know that we're, you know, considering doing this or considering doing that. So that's when they pick up the phone or they sit down and send out emails, you know, I think you should do this. Or, you know. So um, there's a lot of contact, both when we're in session and when we're not in session. So, okay. You do the rest of the year. What do I do the rest of the year? Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, I um, when I worked there as a staff person, you know, that kept me pretty busy. Um, um, the rest of the time, um, I am basically trying to learn about, you know, like I said, we're only in session for, for, for about half the year, but the other half, um, uh, I do a lot of research, and, and I talk to, you know, I try to talk to as many constituents as I can. Plan for the... Yeah, plan for, yeah, exactly, you know, plan for what legislation you want to propose for, for the upcoming year. Yeah. So, I mean, Everybody puts into it the amount of time that they can. I, I have the luxury of putting in a lot of time. You know, somebody who who who's trying to run a, a full-time business, you know, it's a little tougher for them. Uh, so they, they they can't you know spend as much time you know on legislation. But I have the luxury of doing that, so I, I try to take advantage of it. Um, but and, and I, I I meant what I said before. I I think it would be a bad thing if we got to the point where we we had professional politicians up there because I don't think that would do us any any good. You know, I, I, I think you need you need truck drivers and you need bakers and you need you know um, um, nurses and, and teachers and, 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 and doctors and everybody up there to, 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 to give you a good a good perspective on, on things. You know, it's not good for, for, for some professional group to, 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 to just make all the laws. I, I think it would be a bad thing. So. Unfortunately, the guys in Washington kind of head in that direction, right? I mean, most of the guys there, you know, they're, they're from all walks of life, but you know, a lot of them have become, dare I say it, professional politicians, and you know, I, I, I think it's, it doesn't serve us well when that happens. That's my opinion. Okay. Well, I um, think we've had a pretty productive session. Good. <laughs> I, I'm so thankful that you came here oh, today, well, and uh, thank you. And uh, took some time off to, to, to meet with our students. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to thank a couple more people. Brian uh, and Nina put the poster together that ah. we're kind of reluctant to have advertised. <laughs> that email was kind of uh, funny, but oh. uh, he did a great job with that. Oh, thank uh, you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'd like to um, thank Allie for helping me as well. Thank you for helping us uh, get in here. Uh, Mike Worthy is the Dean of Academic Affairs. We've got some food here to take for some of it, as did uh, Professor Cohn, who's uh, the head of the Social Sciences Department. Uh, of course, I'd like to thank everyone else for being here, too. Uh, Mike at MIT with the video. I hope you don't mind that it's being recorded. I don't know if you have to check it out with the experts. Okay. okay. I don't know. I don't know. Hope I didn't say anything that I'm going to No. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was great. It was you great. Can have thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Great job. Thank you. Thank you.